fact, we um, start a new chapter of turning our home around the household atmosphere. So today I am going to be talking about working for God. Just want to let you know, um, I was very excited to do this, and I hope I do very well. If I uh, talk too much, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I am aware that I am live, um, so I'm excited to uh, get started. Uh, so when I first saw the, um, the topic for, for this sermon, Working for God, immediately I was like, work again, work, talk about work again, but no, it's actually more than that. And um, I love that I was assigned uh, this topic. So let's get into our text, which is coming from Colossians 3, um, 3 23, 24. Now, uh, to, for additional understanding, I would like to read our verse for today, or verses for today, from three translations. So the first one is the NIV translation. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is Lord Christ you are serving for. And next um, version is the NLT. Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you are working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward, and the master you are serving is Christ. And the last version, because I know my grandmother is watching, is the Tagalog version. So I am going to read this in Tagalog. Kung maglilingkod kayo, ay gawin ninyo ito buong puso, gaya ng paglilingkod nyo sa Panginoon, hindi sa mga tao. Sapagkat alam ninyo na ang baw bawal isa, bawat isa ay tatagana kanawa kangga kagantihan mula sa Panginoon sa anaming sa anumang alipin o malaya. Tried my best. Nay, tried my best. <laughs> All right. So, um, before we get into the quote, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this day and the word we can study. Your word is powerful and almighty. Lord, I pray for the conviction, understanding and appreciation of your word. I know you are with us while I share your word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So on your page, you should see a quote from Martin Luther, and I will read that. What you do in your house is worth as much as if you did it up in heaven for our Lord God. We should accustom ourselves to think of our position and work as sacred and well-pleasing to God not on account of the position and work, but on account of the word and faith from which the obedience and the work flow. That's Martin Luther. Um, a paragraph below that says, the only way we are able to turn our homes around is to change the perspective of why, or of whom we, I'm sorry, I, I read that, um, perspective of why and for whom we are doing all things. I say to this, the struggle of serving without expect the struggle is serving without expecting anything in return but the importance is sincere serving you have to desire not feeling forced or obligated to serve that's the importance of serving as we go into point one which is from verse 23 it says there whatever you do every one of our actions need to be committed as doing it for the Lord. Yes, absolutely. And I wanted to share a quote from Charles Stanley. He says, earthly wisdom is doing what naturally comes. Godly wisdom is doing what the Holy Spirit compels us to do. I love that because I am a big, big fan of the Holy Spirit. Um, I am with him. I hear the Holy Spirit all the time in everything I do and everything I see. You know, I'm a big fan of the Holy Spirit. And it's true. In serving the sincerity comes out when you listen and you're aware that the Holy Spirit is with you. That's the key to it. Our daily, on your page, our daily life needs to be committed. Look at what the Bible stresses as daily needs. So there are uh, ABC points there. So we'll go into the first one, which is from Acts 17, verse 10 to 12, which is daily search, daily search, the, daily search the scripture. That same night, the believers sent Paul and Silas to another city named Berea. When they arrived there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. 
the people in Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica. They were so glad to hear the message Paul told them. They studied the scriptures every day to make sure what they heard was true. The result was that many of them believed, including many important Greek women and men. The key verse there is 11, where it says, They studied the scriptures every day to make sure that what they heard was true. Now, we admit it or not, we're not able to go to the scripture every day. But the more you do, it really comes easy. God reminds you of the word that you read to him. Uh, you read um, in the Bible. And for me, and you'll see this in, in my sermon today, I am more, um, as I grow in my faith, um, I hear God in the music that I play every morning, in my devotion that I play every morning going to work, as I prepare my mind, my mouth, my eyes to what is about to happen. I just, you know, I let the word of God come in. And um, I think that is part of the scripture. You know, the, the songs that we listen to, um, they're all part of the scripture. And they're based on the scripture. So that's very important. Number two is daily prayer. That's another one. Uh, it's very hard to say that, you know, other than praying for the food or saying, God, thank you for waking me up today or God, ble you know, um, bless my family or God, protect me at night. Uh, we forget how important prayer is. It really is very important. And then from Psalm um, 86, verse 3 and First Thessalonians 5, 17, um, my Lord, be kind to me. I have been praying all day, all day calling on God all day long. Look unto him in everything you do. Never stop praying. And then the last one on that point is letter C, daily take up the cross, Luke 9, 23. Jesus continued to say all of them, any of you who want to be my follower must stop thinking about yourself and what you want. You must be willing to carry the cross that is given to you every day for following me. Taking up the cross is a symbol of commitment, sacrifice, and devotion to one's faith and beliefs. I want to share, um, here's my first one, <laughs> I want to share the lyrics of this, this song um, from Elevation Worship that it just, to me, it talks about taking up the cross and it reminds us um, about it and it's called Do It Again. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall, but you have never failed me yet waiting for change to come, knowing the battle's won, for you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness. I am still in your hands, this is my confidence, you've never failed. That is taking up the cross, devotion to one's faith and belief. Hang, hang on there and that's what will help you work, working for God. And I do wanna say that yes, it's working for God, but we are working for God through our marriage, through our family, through um, just the day-to-day -day do doings that we do, whether we go grocery shopping or we're, you know, working from home and speaking to these random people or we're at school and trying to make good friends. We are working for God, and the goal is to keep that um, in mind. The paragraph there on your page, it says, We may view work as secular and leading a Bible study as spiritual, yet the Bible draws no such distinction. Everything that we do must fall under the category of spiritual as unto the Lord. Okay. Uh, point two. So temporal work provides a passing and temporal reward. Yet working is unto the Lord, produces spiritually birth but earthly rewards. Temporal work, what is that? It's limited, it's not permanent, it's short term. But the rewards are fulfilling and power change properties. That's great. So I wanted to take this opportunity to share a little bit of a story about uh, my job. Um, and I'm, what I did was instead of freestyling it because I don't want to say too much, um, I decided to write it down. So I am going to uh, read it. Okay. So I think most of you know that I have been in the practice I work at for 12 years. I started as a medical receptionist with no experience and now I'm a practice manager for two specialties. The first 11 years of my job, I experienced a lot of ups and downs. A lot of it affected me personally. As things got harder, my faith did get stronger. I definitely felt my faith was being tested daily, but, not being, able, but being able to wake up with strength to do it again meant I still had victory over the enemy's plan. 
just recently God showed me the reason behind many years of suffering and made sense to me and it proved that God's plans are always for our good no matter how hard. It is hard to do but always remember the power in surrendering our burdens to Jesus is mighty. I know I still struggle with this with other things but for one thing is sure nothing is impossible with the God we serve. So the on your page, there's Matthew 6, 33. It says, Seek first his spiritual kingdom, and all these temporal will be added to you. All these things temporal will be added to you. In connection to the story I shared, I want to share also that Saturday, October 15, 2022, is, a very, important, is, not, is very important not only to me, but to my family. The Friday before I left the office, the song playing in my car, because I play the music before and after work, was the song Egypt by Bethel Music and Corey Asbury. And I want to share this very, very powerful song. This is my anthem. This is my testimony. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart, because you found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. The cloud by day is a sign that you are with me. The fire at night is the guiding light to my feet. Because you found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release. You stepped into my Egypt and you took me by the hand. And you marched me out in freedom into the promised land. And now I will not forget you. No, I'll sing of what, you do, what you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. Although this is not on our sheets, I did want to read also Psalm 27, 112, as I was doing and connecting this to the sermon today. Uh, this was my devotion from just last Thursday, and I knew for sure this was God speaking to me, saying, you're going to share it on Sunday, save it, send it to yourself. So I did. So here we go, Psalm 27, 112. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes. Who will stumble and fall? Though an army be besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice the shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes or false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I was confused by the hardship I was facing, but I refused to let what I know but I refuse to let what I didn't know steal the security of what I know, which is what? That God has a purpose for those hardships. Um, as I wor work through all the struggles of those many years, whether it's at work, whether it's through my marriage or my family, he has a purpose, and it's about being patient and know that it's his time that we wait for. It's not that we want it to happen now, so we... Um, Beg and beg. No, we have to be patient and say, in your time, Lord, in your time, Lord. That's what we, what, that's a, that's my test, part of my testimony. So, yes. So, just going back to our sermon, some of God's definition of work, service and compassion, diligence 
and integrity. Work with honesty, fairness, and faith reflecting. Always think about that. We are all surrounded by non-believers. We see it, the way they speak, the way they listen to music, the way they, op they have their opinions. But remember, in doing God's work, which again is not just working, it's in everything that you do, all your interactions, honesty, fairness, and let them see what kind of faith we have as believers. And the last is purpose and meaning. It is not just a means of earning a living, but also a way to fulfill a divine purpose. Now that goes to our actual work. Those that work here, you know, sometimes it's all, all about the money, just making a paycheck, just getting all of that. But remember, um, first of all, you don't have a job unless it's because of God. You know, He is the reason why. So you take the money and you spend it in earthly things, that's not going to do anything. You remember that it has to go back to the one that provided. And everything is provided by, from the little things to the big things, you know. From, from that last slice of bread to your amazing house, only God provided that, okay? Only God provided that. Yes. At times, working for God, we end up facing challenges, trouble for enemies, and attacks. We will struggle not letting the enemy steal the confidence that grounds us. But sometimes God's plans frustrates us, but that is momentary. It's going to end. The frustration, the wondering, why is it taking so long? Why are you doing this? It's, there, it's, there's going to be an end to that. Remember, God handpicked David as king and promised him an enduring legacy. Yet, enemies still challenged his rule and discord still taunted his peace. That's where faith gets hard. That's where our hope can be sabotaged by what we don't know yet. And our conviction is shaken but what we can, uh, by what we can understand. But continue to work for God. Let that be your purpose. As I end, I want to read the quote on the page here and go into the moving forward. So the quote is from William Tyndale, and it says, If we look externally, there is a difference between washing dishes and preaching the word of God. But as touching to please God, there is no difference at all. That's a biblical view of work, that there's no difference when done to honor the Lord between preaching and washing the dishes. I love that so much. I love it so much. For as long as you know that what you're doing is for the Lord and, for, and you appreciate all the blessings that he has given you to be able to even work, you know, it doesn't make a difference. It really doesn't make a difference. So keep that in mind. And are moving forward, honoring Christ in your work. You might have to do it being unashamed and outspoken as a believer today, you know. And that has happened to me recently, but it's okay. You know, I, that day that it happened, um, I went home and I was still smiling, and I was like, this is it. Oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> you know, this is my faith, and it's part of being a believer, but I'm proud, and I will keep going. Um, yes. So we're going to go into our closing prayer. And as we... As I go into this closing prayer, and just, again, appreciate everybody, letting the church, letting me be a part of this. I told you, I love the Holy Spirit. I appreciate the Holy Spirit, and this is one of my songs. This is one of the songs that gets me through, and it is a great reminder of just what it means to be a child of God. Father, thank you so much for this day, Lord. 
Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share your word, Lord. I am a proud child of God, and I know that my this sermon, Lord, will reach others. And that is the goal. That is the, what the gospel is about, Lord. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of it, Lord. I pray for working for you. I pray for working for you when it comes to my marriage, to my children, to my job, to my co-workers, to my extended family, and to my immediate family. I pray for working for you. And I pray for my church who will do the same, who will cling on to you when working for you is hard. When those days where it, it, it's easier not to work for you, Lord, speak to us. Holy Spirit, speak to us during those hours and those days, Lord. Because we know that when we cling to you, we can do it. We can, it can be confusing, Lord. It can be hard. It can be discouraging. But Lord, you're always there. You are always there, Lord. Thank you so much for this day, Lord. I pray for this great week ahead of us. I pray for uh, guidance, uh, protection, healing for those that are not here, Lord. I pray for uh, just pure joy and happiness that comes from you and nothing else, Lord. Thank you so much for being who you are, constant, consistent, strong, dependable, comforter. Lord, I love you so much. We love you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.